Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Allahumma ja'al tajamu'ana hadha tajamu'an marquma wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma wa la taj'al fina wa la baydina shaqiyan wa la mahruma innaka wali yudhalika wal qadiru alayhi اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباع وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه أما بعد The subject of tonight's حلقة is اختيار الصديق الصالح How to choose our righteous friends Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We have not left anything outside this book, outside the Qur'an, outside of the Sunnah. So the best of guidance on how to choose friends and what friends to stay away from, you will find that in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right off the start, الأخلاء يومئذ أعداء إلا المتقون. All of the friends that have united and they've gotten together in this dunya for whatever purpose, for business, for social, for entertainment, for political reasons, for whatever reasons whatsoever, on the day of judgment, all of these friends will turn into enemies. All of them. With the exception, the only exception is إِلَّا الْمُتَّقُونَ Why? We know from the very start, we as Muslims, we always begin with the ending in mind. The ending is the criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established for us. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whoever is removed and spared the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and removed from the hellfire, and by the mercy and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters paradise, this person is indeed victorious. With that in mind, we choose our friends to advance this agenda, to advance this objective. We do not choose friends that are going to distract us from this mission. The mission which, which, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the world of jinn and the world of humans or people except to worship me, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is our mission. Our mission is very clear right off the start and the ending is very clear. It is to enter a paradise the width of which is the heavens and the earth and to win the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We start inshallah by way of the process of elimination. Meaning that who we as Muslims cannot and should not take as friends. And that will make things easier. We eliminate this pool of friends, or so-called friends. And then the second pool that we should avoid, not by way of obligatory act of worship, but we should because of the harm they bring. And the third group is the one that we should seek to embrace as friends. Okay? The first group Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا لَذِينَ أَمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخِذُوا عَدُوِّي وَعَدُوَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ تُلْقُونَ إِلَيْهِمْ بِالْمَوَدَّةِ وَقَدْ كَفَرُوا بِمَا جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ الْحَقِّ يُخْرِجُونَ الرَّسُولَ وَإِيَّاكُمْ To the end of the ayat. All who believe of لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله do not take my enemy, the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَدُوَّكُمْ and your enemy as well. The enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Israel, evidently, the enemy of the believer. Uh, uh, Do not take them as friends and as allies and as protectors. You do things that will bring you closer to them and will bring them closer to you. So that's one category. The second one, in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إنما ينهاكم الله عن الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروا أن تولوا. الله سبحانه وتعالى forbids you from taking allies and friends and protectors from those who fight you in your deen, from those who expel you from your homes, from those who perceive 
your belief of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah as a crime. Something that's worthy for them to fight you for. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَدْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا On that day, with the one who caused injustice to themselves, the transgressor, will bite literally in some of the interpretations of the Qur'an that biting one's hands is something literal. In other words, it's not just to show the intensity of the regret and the sorrow they feel on Judgment Day because they followed the wrong person or they've taken the wrong person as a friend, but because of the intensity of the regret and the sorrow, they are biting their own hands, they're eating their own hands and they're not realizing this. And you can imagine someone who is going to now perpetuate in the hellfire Billah for eternity, biting their fingers or their hands, what difference does it make? It makes no difference. One who's lost their place in paradise, can you imagine the amount of regret they have? So their double regret, the regret of losing a place in paradise and the regret of ending up with Riyadh Billah in the hellfire. يَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَدْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا I wish I'd have taken a path with the Prophet Sallallahu Meaning that I wish I'd have followed the Qur'an and the Sunnah. لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانَ خَلِيلًا Woe to me, I wish I did not take so and so as a friend. Why? لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي He has misguided me. And this applies for the males and the females. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ Means they have misguided me from the Qur'an بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي After the message has clearly reached me. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا this is the way and the tricks of Satan. Indeed, he is deceptive and an enemy, an open enemy for the human. This is among the category that is obligatory for us not to take friends from this category. category. Why? Because it distracts us from the mission. And it makes us lose focus and lose our position in paradise and end up in the hellfire. Similarly, or in an opposite, from an opposite angle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَاكِ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَاكِ رَفِيقًا So the friends that we aspire to be with on Judgment Day are the same friends that we should aspire to be in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, and whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala infinitely, and obeys the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam infinitely, فَأُولَٰئِكْ ذُوزْ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those are going to be with the company of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them and showered them with his bounties مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ From the Prophets and the Messengers. وَالصِّدِّقِينَ And those who have reached such a high level of conviction and truthfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. والشهداء and the martyrs those who have given up everything including themselves في سبيل الله والصالحين and the righteous ones وحسن أولئك رفيقة Allah سبحانه وتعالى says those are indeed the best of friends so since those are the best of friends that we aspire to be in the here with in the hereafter then we should aspire to be with them in this dunya now we move to another category of course there is a clear warning in the hadith. And the Prophet Sallallahu tells us, الْمَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلِ That every person is upon the deen following a similar ideology of their friend or their friends. فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلِ Meaning that be careful, uh, be alert as to who you take as friends and as allies and as protectors. Also in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us about asdiqa Yani the, the friends that are righteous and the friends that are unrighteous or the friends that are mischief or corrupt. The Prophet ﷺ says, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالْجَلِيسُ السُّوءِ كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِخِ الْكِيرِ The example of a good friend that is righteous, that is pious, and the example of a bad friend that is corrupt, that is mischievous, 
is like the example of one who sells perfumes and the example of the blacksmith. The one who sells perfumes, he's either going to give you some, here, take a sample, try it out, let me put some on your hand, huh? or you're going to buy some perfume from him, so you buy something good, or you're going to smell riham tayyibah, you know, you, get, you never go wrong. You know, all three levels are good. And the blacksmith, Imma, and is the one who works with iron and metals and so on, and solder and so on and so forth. Imma ayyahriqa thiyabak. I say he's either going to burn your clothes, or you'll find, you know, a rather rotten, you know, nasty smell, you know, from, from him, or from what he does. So this is the example that the Prophet Sallallahu or the parable that the Prophet Sallallahu gives us with righteous friends versus corrupted friends. We come to the second category, which is what uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amr al-Khattab warns of. A person who is ignorant. They are ignorant in their deen, and a person who is safi, their opinion is so weak. You cannot rely on their words of advice, because oftentimes they will say the wrong thing. That's why Amr al-Khattab said, سُكُوتُهُ خَيْرٌ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ For such a person to be quiet is better than for them to speak. And to be far from you, better than for you than for them to come close to you. And to be dead is better for you than for them to be alive. I'll give you an example. A man who's ignorant of the Sharia, Safi, goes to visit a scholar in the hospital who was ill. And what do you think he supplicates? He knows some supplications, doesn't know how to use them. So he said, Asbar wa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It's a dua that you make for somebody who just died. So imagine you're walking into a hospital and this person is agonizing, right? You know, in distress, right? in pain. And the first thing he sees this friend who's going to tell him, Asbar wa have patience, look forward for the ajr. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا لَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ He's short of saying, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذَ وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عَنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى It's a dua you make for somebody who's dead. Or to say something like, يَعْنِ مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever calamity or tragedy that you're suffering is because of what your hands have earned. That is, that is an ignorant friend for you. That is a person who is better for them to be quiet than to speak. Al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi, pardon me, have said that friends are three different types. A friend is like food that is necessary for you to have because of the circumstances, because you know, of the, the, the reality of the way things work, so on and so forth. It's necessary for you to have this friend. And a person who is like medicine, you need him every now and then. It's a good friend to have. You need him every now and then. And a friend who is like illness, you never need him. Stay away. Stay away from him. Shafi'i rahimahullah has a statement also says, had it not been, uh, bil -ashar, had it not been for standing up in salah at the time of sahar, the third, the last third of the night, lawla al bil -ashar, wa musahabatu al -akhyar, and taking friends from among the righteous, I would not have chosen to remain, you know, in these homes, meaning that in this dunya. So now we come to the third category, which is the category where we need to focus on as Muslims. What are the qualities and the characteristics that we look or we should look for in a friend that we take in this dunya? And then once we take such a person as a friend, how should we test this person? In general, when we deal with people at large, you know, be it friends or non-friends, be it neighbors, be it colleagues, co-workers, you know, business associates, what have you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very, very simple advice in the Quran. And it's worthy for each and every one of us to remember that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khudi al -af. Take whatever little goodness people have to offer. Do not raise your expectations. خُذِ الْعَفْرِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ 
enjoin the good. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And turn away from the ignorant. Turn away from the second category. خُذِ الْعَفْءِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Now, it's, an, it's, a, it's part of our intrinsic nature, nature that we must have friends. The Prophet ﷺ says, لَا خَيْرَ فِي مَنْ لَا يَأْلَفْ وَلَا يُؤْلَفْ There's no good in one who has, you know, isolated himself from society. That he does not like being around people or taking friends. And others also don't like being around this person. That means what good is in this person? So therefore, our intrinsic nature dictates that we take friends, that we take companions. The number one trait that we should look for in a person is al-iman, righteousness. It is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, piety and righteousness, and a sidq Okay? In other words, this person is a believer. I'm going to pray with this person. If I err, he's going to correct me. He's going to encourage me to do the right thing. He's going to be for me like one of the Salaf has said. One of the scholars said, he's going to be for me better than my own nafs. Why? Your nafs will always command you to do the wrong thing. Your friend, as they say, صَدِيقُكَ مَنْ صَدَقَكَ لَا مَنْ صَدَّقَكَ Your friend is the one who is going to be rather honest and frank with you. When you do good, he's going to say you've done good. Keep it up. Do better. When you do bad, he's going to correct you. You said something bad. You've done something bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't do this. Do that. Do the better. You know? So, so that's the, the number one trait in this person. Number two, al-wafa. Meaning that this person is going to be true in his covenant to you. The covenant of friendship. If you need him, he's there. And when it comes to al-wafa, or this type of friends, we can divide that into two different subcategories, if you will. The first of which, those are good friends. They will do things for you. They will help you financially. They will help you with their skills. They will help you in many ways, but without making such a huge sacrifice. In other words, they still look at you as a friend, and they help you, and you will find them there when you need them, but they're not going to put you ahead of themselves. The second category, which is of much higher caliber, which is very difficult to find, which is the category that lived at the time of the Prophet The category that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his divine testimony when he says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا That they would prefer you as a Muslim, as a believer, as a friend over themselves. وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا Even if they have a need, you know, that is greater than yours. In other words, if you are in financial distress and they need the money they have, they will take it from, you know, that which is necessary or a need for them to continue to live and survive and they will give it to you because they prefer you over them. And we saw this fine example between Al-Ansar and Muhajireen where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hashr says, وَيُثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا وَمَنْ يُقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَاكَ هُمْ مُفْلِحُونَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says to show that the friendship in Islam and the friendship in Iman never ends. It's never severed, not even by death. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following ayah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَلَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ O Allah forgive us and our brethren that has preceded us in Iman. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَأُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ O Allah do not make any hard feelings in our hearts. Cleanse our hearts from any hardships, any hard feelings towards our Muslim brothers and sisters. إِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Indeed, you are the all-forgiven, the all-merciful. The third quality in a friend that we ought to have, الأمانة, for this person to be trustworthy. In other words, I can share secrets with this friend, and he's not going to go and expose me. I can share weakness, weaknesses that I have, and I seek his help to help me overcome it. And we all have weaknesses. No one on the face of the earth you know, lives without weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. We all have uh, deficiencies. We all have defects. Nobody's perfect. Al-Kamalu lillah. 
Perfection belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're not going to expose you. To the contrary, if they see something, they will advise you in secrecy. Because a friend is not going to expose you. If he or she advise you in public, they have scandalized you. They have not given you advice. Similarly, a fourth trait that one ought to have in a friend. And this comes to be clearly manifested in this dunya and in the hereafter. That we all should be keen about making friends or having friends from those who memorized, understood, and applied the Qur'an. Why? We learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that لا قدر الله May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, prevent us from His wrath and His punishment. لا قدر الله If any of us, for whatever sins that we've committed and end up in the hellfire, this person who ends up in paradise from among you know, the scholars, the righteous, the martyrs, those who memorized the Qur'an, those who understood the Qur'an, so on and so forth, end up in paradise, they will say, Oh Allah, you said, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ You said, in it, there's everything they wish for, and you have more. What I wish for is to have my friend with me. What I wish for is to have, in other words, this friend becomes an intercessor for you. Becomes an intercessor for you. So you never at a loss taking somebody who is righteous to be your friend. And of course, many other qualities that we see, like for example, to have the synergy. You know, we all are like, the Prophet ﷺ described us like metals. Some attract and some repel, right? So two people can be at a similar level of righteousness, but the synergy spiritually is not there. So you have to be keen about, you know, having some level of synergy, some level of common understanding, right? Level of education, if you will, uh, level of interest in other things. And that will help strengthen the relationship. But to be talking to someone or having a friend that you always speak in a different wavelength, always missing each other, you know, these are things that ought to be taken into consideration in terms of the competency between two people or more of becoming friends. Now, we come to the issue of testing your friend. Is this a must? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because you know, friends who are around you when things are going well for you, when you have the money and you have the health and you have the children and so on and so forth, these are not your true friends. Umar ibn Khattab he said you must test your friends on three different levels, on three different areas. The first of which, when your friend gets angry, is his anger going to make him exit or stay away or stay clear from the truth? Or is he going to be governed and guided by the Sharia? This is a real test. When one loses their, you know, their, their temper, if you will, then their true personality surfaces. Their true personality surfaces. So is this person going to, to remain your friend? Or is he going to basically say what's truly in their hearts and on their minds and then expose themselves? That's one. The second of which is when you travel. And traveling, of course, in the past is not like traveling now. But even if you go on a long journey, you go for Hajj, you go for Umrah, so on, there are a lot of hardships. So you get to observe this person in different moods, in different levels, while they're tired, while they're sleepy, while they're this and that. Are they truly your friend? Are they going to reflect that same sentiment that they reflect? when things are going well, when they're rested, and when they're well fed, and when things are going well, or are they going to change? Are they going to share their food with you? Are they going to share their water? That's what they used to do in the past, of course. Now food and water is you know, plentiful everywhere you go. But these are things that you can test them with as well. The third of which is when you deal with them with money. And this is something for us to be careful about not to ever take a friend who is a friend of this dunya. <coughs> Because they will sell you in a heartbeat. A person whose focus is this lower form of life is a person who has no friends except life, except this dunya. So when you deal with this person with money, is money going to put between you and them? You know, it was narrated that one of the Salaf had a jariya. A jariya means like, like a servant. And a friend of his came to visit. 
So he knocks at the door, he said, is so-and-so my friend here? She said, no. He said, well, can you tell me where he keeps his money? Because I want to borrow some money from him. She said, yes, go ahead. So she showed him where he keeps the money, he went and he took the money, and he left. So when the master came back, she told him. He said, what did you do? She said, I just allow him to go in and take the money. She said, he said, Idhabi fa'anti hurra fi sabilillah. He said, go, you are a free woman. I set you free because you allowed my friend to come in. So money does not put between friends. If you can value your friend and sell him for $100 or $1,000 or whatever number of dollars, that is not truly your friend. That is not truly your friend. So see, these are some of some guidelines, if you will, some ways that we can test and see who our friends are. But at the end of the day, we must keep in mind that times have changed. We are not living at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu at the time of the Ansar and the Muhajireen, at the time of the Khulafa and the Tabi'een. These times now, unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of people are living in a capitalistic society. Their number one priority is the material wealth. So if you are able to find a friend of the third category, indeed you have found a jewel that is very precious that is very unique, you know, that's very difficult to find. And this is a friend that if you lose, you have lost a lot. So we need to lower our expectations a little bit. So you'll find that there are some friends in need and there are some friends in need. The first category is the needy friends, they always need you. So in other words, you like you like the bloodline, for the blood supply for them. And the second category is truly is that if you ever need a friend, you know, you will find them there for you. But at the end of the day, it is part of being a friend. It's not to share every problem and every calamity and everything with your friend. Because that definitely puts some level of stress and some level of hardship on your friend. So if you care for him, not every time you run into a problem, you run to him. First and foremost, you ought to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the character of a believer. But when you must, you know, confer and, and, and console with a friend, then at least it's a friend that you can find. At least that is a friend, you know, that you can find. One last word for our youngsters. You know, as we are keen, you know, to find good friends for ourselves, we ought to also train our children, our youngsters, on establishing a criteria of how to choose your friends. Because we know most of the troubled youngsters and the teenagers are troubled because of having the wrong friends, because of peer pressure. It's almost the number one you know, uh, danger for the youth is just hanging around peers that are corrupted. They ended up smoking their cigarettes and testing with the alcohol, you know, just testing and trying with the alcohol and sometimes with drugs and so on and so forth that you will find in some schools, middle and high school, the use of drugs and alcohol is somewhere around 40-50% of the students who go to school, you know, are actually have used or are using alcohol and drugs on a regular basis. And they're using things that you can never imagine. You and I probably don't even know about. You know, things that you can buy at the pharmacy, or things that you can burn and inhale. It's just very, very strange and weird stuff that they, that they do. So this is something we also ought to be concerned about, to establish this criteria for our children, to make sure that we attach them to friends that are righteous. We attach them to the masajid. We attach them to the neighborhoods where we live the good ones around them, of course, and to attach them to their homes, to find comfort, to find the ability for them to express themselves and share their challenges and share their problems and be open-minded about what they face, realizing that we lived in a time, we grew up in a time and in a place that is different from the time and place that they are being you know, raised in. So the challenges we had are different from the challenges that they're having. So we need to also you know, be aware, educate ourselves, expose ourselves to the environment, and be, you know, receptive, you know, to their challenges and their concerns, and help them overcome these obstacles and deal with these challenges day in and day out. هذا والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم سبحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. If anybody has any comments. Uh, any uh, questions, you're more than welcome to, you know, join in, inshallah. Yes, brother. Uh, 
Um, so the, the second category, you can, like, there could be people, believer or, and disbelievers? Correct. The second category could be a person who is a Muslim. But their level of commitment is so shallow. And their level of knowledge is, is weak. Right? So this person is bound to be somebody who is ignorant. Okay? What you want to make sure is that you are around people who are knowledgeable. People who do Qiyam al Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never deceive someone who stands up in the last third of the night and does Qiyam al -Layh. So you'll find that when you ask them for advice, they are giving you advice from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So they're not giving you their own personal opinion. They're giving you knowledge that is divine. So they're setting you on the road, you know, on the, in the correct, you know, uh, road to follow. Allah ta'ala. Can you clarify the story uh, about the Jariya? I didn't get it. Was she not supposed to? No, she actually, she realized the value of the friendship that the two had. So she didn't say, no, I cannot let you have what you need. Oh, okay. So she said, come on in, you know, take what you need. And as a result, this man set her free. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it just, it, it goes to show that money does not put between friends, you know. Otherwise, you know, uh, they're not friends really. Because the word sadiq comes from the word sidq. And sidq being truthful in your covenant. So if taking somebody as a friend, uh, it was narrated that a shafi was approached by a person and uh, he said, I want to be your friend. Uh, he said, are you ready to share your money with me. In other words, your money is mine and mine is yours. He said, no, I'm not ready to go. Then he said, then you're not ready to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, it just goes to show that money does not put between friends. So we, like, we deal with a lot of people throughout our lives. I mean, you know, we have associates, co-workers, and... Sure. But then, like, friendship is a person that you have, like, I guess it's different than rest of the people. We mentioned the, the, yani the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran when he says خُذِ الْعَفْرِ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرَضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Take whatever little goodness people have to offer. Be it from your colleagues, your neighbors, your friend, you know, your general friends, if you're a general category of your friends. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Hashr لَا يَنْسَاكُمْ لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينَ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids you not from taking friends from among the disbelievers who did not fight you in your deen, expelled you from your homes that you practice birr. Birr is the highest level of kind treatment showing them, displaying the best of character towards them you know, as a way of showing who you are as a Muslim وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ that you be just and fair towards them so there is no prohibition here the prohibition is for those who, you know, fight you in your deen, make fun of your, you know, of your prophet, peace be unto him, uh, make mockery of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, you know, make mockery of the way we worship, you know, things of that nature, and expel us from our homes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our sake is making it prohibited for us that we take them as friends and as allies and as protectors, okay? But the, the door is wide open, however, however, just a word of caution, is that you cannot divulge secrets to people like that. Because you never know when they're going to turn against you. They are not governed by a divine frame of reference. We are. If Nasser is my friend, and I'm his friend, and so on and so forth, and for whatever reason we have a fallout, I am governed by the Sharia. And that's why we said you have to test your friends in a moment of anger. You know, you're no longer friends, something has happened, whatever the case might be. Is that gonna cause them to exit the parameters of the Sharia, to exit the truth, to deviate from the truth, or is it going to command them and oblige them to continue on that path? So this is, this is the divine frame of reference that we uphold in good times and in bad times, when in good terms and on bad terms. We cannot, you know, compromise that. Allah Ta'ala ala wa ala. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته